Tonight I plan to shoot the Orion Nebula. I shot this object before um, on my first time using the Skywatcher mount. Uh, it was also my first time doing polar alignment. I did alright. I, was, I wasn't able to get perfect polar alignment, uh, so I didn't get as long of exposures as I'd like to. Uh, so we're trying to improve on that tonight. Um, I also purchased some filters. Uh, once specifically the uh, Bader Moon and Skyglow filter to see if I can uh, bring out some more nebulosity in, uh, in the Orion Nebula. Try to darken my background a bit and get rid of some of the noise. Especially being in Toronto, I get a lot of light pollution. I still don't have a bat nut mask, so I'm uh, still focusing uh, by fo first looking at a star, zooming in on the camera, and trying to get really good focus just manually. Before I start shooting the Orion Nebula, uh, I'm going to take some shots at the moon uh, see if I can stack some things together and uh, we have almost a 50% moon uh, and it's right up, right up top of us right now so we uh, should be able to get some good shots. We do have uh, pretty clear skies until about uh, 12 o'clock tonight so I will have about three hours uh, to get things going um, and to see what kind of shots I can get. So the telescope is set up. Uh, what you're looking at is a Celestron 6SE telescope. Uh, you also have the 50mm Orion guide scope on top. Uh, you can see there's no camera attached, but there is a T-ring there with uh, the orange cable. Uh, I will be putting this camera that you're currently using to view this on the back of the telescope for shooting. The mount that we are using today is the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. This is my new mount. Uh, I've only used it once outside. Uh, again, I didn't get perfect polar alignment, so hopefully we can better that tonight. Uh, going down from there, we have the Syscan controller, which is connected to the USB port on the back, which leads to the mini PC here that I use for acquisition. And yeah, let's see if we can get some shots of the moon right now. talk about my acquisition setup so uh, uh, as you can see here I am using a 7 inch LCD screen mostly used for uh, Raspberry Pi projects um, but I have it uh, attached to a mini PC that I purchased and also uh, overhauled a bit added some memory added some storage um, so I'm using uh, astrophotography tool to do the capturing uh, right now I'm currently doing 14 second exposures at ISO 1200 and uh, yeah it's looking pretty good so far as you can see the Orion Nebula is right there in view um, and over here we have EQ mod showing that we are tracking um, and this is just for controlling the mount but uh, it's good to keep an eye on hopefully these turn out and um, and yeah, so that's, uh, that's what we're doing right now. After finishing up outside, I took what I captured inside for processing. I'll show you some of the pre-processing steps I did for my moon image, but keep in mind that I'm brand new to all of this, so it might not be the best way of getting good images. First, I took the video of the moon that I shot earlier and dragged it into PIP to do some pre-processing. This will give me an uncompressed AVI which I can then bring into AutoStacker for stacking and image registration. 
In pitch processing options, I made sure the final image would be in color and then clicked the test detect threshold button to be sure PIP could detect the moon. In the preview window, you will see your object in red telling you that PIP knows what it's looking at. In the quality options tab, you have the option of letting PIP choose the best quality frames. In my case, I chose to use uh, 2200 frames out of the 2300 frames in the video. On the output tab, I selected the output format to be AVI uncompressed. Then I click the processing button. Processing will take some time depending on how many frames PIP is working with and how fast your computer is. Once it's done, you'll hear a satisfying sound telling you to move on to the next step. So moving on to AutoStacker, you can drag your AVI video into AutoStacker and then select Surface. Make sure your preview window is visible and then click the Analyze button. This will look at each frame and plot their quality on a graph. Then select how many images you want and their frame percentages to stack. If you select the Sharpened option, AutoStacker will generate a second file which is sharpened. Before stacking the image, you'll want to set your alignment points on your object. The more points you have, the longer it takes to process, but the more aligned your image will be. Finally, click Stack and wait for your image to process. Once it's complete, you'll end up with a folder for each frame percentage you chose. In my case, I had one for 50%, 60%, and 75%. Going into each one of these folders will take you to two images, one stacked with sharpening and the other one without sharpening. I feel the sharpening that AutoStacker applies onto its images is a bit too heavy, um, and I feel I can get better results sharpening it myself. So let's stick with the, just the stacked image. I'll now take this image into PixInsight and Lightroom for further processing and try to pull out details from the image. I'll apply some sharpening, remove noise, darken the backgrounds, and add a few other touch-ups. In the end, I was able to get these results. Alright, getting back to the Unrhyme Nebula. I ended up using Deep Sky Stacker to stack 122 14 second frames at ISO 800. This gave me a total exposure time of 28 minutes and 28 seconds. The reason I used Deep Sky Stacker over Auto Stacker for this image is because of how easy it is to integrate your darks and flats. I ended up stacking two versions of the Orion Nebula, one with flats included and one without. My initial thought was that the flats I took earlier were not good enough, so I wanted to compare it to see what had the best results. You can see that the stacked image without frames has this radial gradient to it, uh, so that's not good. It turns out the flats I took were good enough to reduce this gradient effect. I chose this image to bring into PixInsight for further processing. I'm not yet prepared or confident enough to share my steps for processing a deep sky image like this, but maybe I'll do a tutorial one day. I gotta say, I feel this image is better than my first attempts at shooting the Orion Nebula. Just a quick note, doing a side-by-side -side comparison from what I shot earlier to now, I'm impressed with what the Beta Moon and Sky Glow filter uh, does to my images. I do notice uh, noise decretion 
I do notice darker backgrounds and uh, I think I'm going to continue using this filter as long as I'm in a light polluted city.